Hello guys, good day. Welcome to another video lecture in ACC 311 Income Taxation. In this specific video lecture, we will be continuing our discussion with gross income. Gross income, but this time we will focus on the items which are excluded as part of your gross income. Okay? As we all know, gross income guys, these are income of a taxpayer that may be subject to basic tax, final tax on passive income, or final tax on capital gains tax. But again, there are items of gross income which are tax exempt. That means they are to be excluded in accounting for your total gross income. Okay? So, formally, exclusions, these are income or receipts which are excluded from gross income and therefore are not subject to income tax. They do not form part of the gross income so again it will not be subjected to either your basic tax final tax for passive income or final tax on your capital gains tax so the following are examples of gross income but are excluded to be computed or are to are to be excluded in the computation of your total gross income. Number one, we have proceeds of a life insurance, amounts received by insured or by insured as returns of premium, gifts, bequests, and devices, compensation for injuries or sickness, income exempt under treaty, retirement benefits, pensions, gratuities, and etc. And your miscellaneous items okay so every component of your exclusions to gross income guys will be discussed further in our succeeding um, slides okay to start we have number one proceeds of a life insurance so proceeds of a life insurance Ex is excluded from your gross income so these are proceeds of a life insurance policies paid to the heirs or beneficiaries upon the death of the insured, whether in a single sum or otherwise are excluded from gross income. So again, it is very clear when there is a life insurance and when the insured has died, any proceeds received by their heirs or beneficiaries will be exempted from tax or will be exempted in computing for the total gross income. Including, guys, when a particular corporation insures their key personnel and the beneficiary is the corporation. Okay, for example, a corporation insures the CEO with the corporation as the beneficiary. So in that case, guys, when the CEO dies, the Proceeds from the life insurance of the deceased CEO will also be not subject to tax on the point of view of the corporation. Okay. However, when there is interest on proceeds included in that life insurance, so such interest guys will be subject to tax. If such proceeds are held by the insurer under an agreement to pay interest thereon, the interest payment shall be the ones who will be included in the gross income. So let us say the insurer would like to um, or has delayed, for example, the payment of the insurance proceeds to the beneficiary of that deceased insured personnel then therefore, any interest paid to the ear or beneficiary due to the late delivery or late um, payment of the proceeds of life insurance will be the ones which will be included as part of the total gross income. Okay? Another is the amount received by the insured as a return of premium. Okay, this time, um, there is still an insurance, but there is a return of premium, okay? Meaning the taxpayer or the insured is paying premium for that um, insurance. Okay, what is excluded 
guys, is the return of premium. Okay, for example, the amount received by the insured as a return of premium paid by him under life insurance, endowment, or annuity contracts either during the term or at the maturity of the term mentioned in the contract or upon surrender of the contract. Okay, so that is excluded, meaning the amount total paid as a premium by the insured will be exempted, but excess of premium return shall be included in the gross income. When the amounts added, okay, if the amounts when added to amounts received before the taxable year under such contract exceeds the aggregate premium paid, whether or not paid during the taxable year, the excess shall be included on the gross income. Okay? So, for example, when the total proceeds is, let us say, 150000 and then the aggregate payment made by the insured is only 100000 okay? So, obviously, the excess of the proceeds, which is 50000 will be considered as part of your gross income. Okay? In case of a transfer for a valuable consideration by assignment or otherwise of a life insurance, endowment, or annuity contract, or any interest therein, only the actual value of such consideration and the amount of the premiums and the sum subsequently paid by the transferee are exempt from taxation. Okay, to illustrate the concepts of this um, consideration for premiums, let us Use this into an illustration. We have here Alberto insured in a 1 million life insurance policy with annual premium payments of 20,000 up to 10 years. If Alberto outlives the policy after the 10th year, he will be paid a 500,000 maturity value. So in this case, guys, Alberto will be paying 20,000 per year up to 10 years. Okay? However, if Alberto outlives the policy, meaning Alberto is still alive even after the 10 years of maturity, then Alberto will be receiving 500000 So obviously, guys, if Alberto unfortunately dies within that, um, within that um, uh, period, Alberto will be receiving 1 million life insurance. So obviously, if, that, if Alberto dies, Okay, if Alberto dies, so portion of that premium will be taxable and portion of it will not be taxable. Okay, for example, scenario one, Alberto died on the eighth year of coverage and his ears collected the one million proceeds. Okay, let us say on scenario one, Alberto died on the eighth year of coverage and his ears collected the 1 million proceeds. What will be the tax consequence? In that case, guys, the entire 1 million will be exempted, okay? Since it is, um, since it will be considered as a life insurance proceeds received by his ears, okay? So again, as mentioned earlier, any life insurance such life insurance will be considered as tax exempt when received by their ears or beneficiary when when the ones who is insured has actually died second scenario let us say upon the death of alberto the insurance company negotiated for an extension of the payment of the proceeds wherein the insurance company shall pay 1,050,000 on the extended payment, then how much will be exempted and how much will be taxable? So in this case, guys, there is an extension of payment for the proceeds, but from 1 million, there will be 1,050,000 to be paid by the insurance company to the ears or beneficiary of Alberto. So in this case, that 50,000 will be considered as if it is an interest. So again, since again, it is an interest, in any interest derived from um, proceeds of that insurance will be considered as part of your taxable income. So therefore, again, the entire 1 million will be exempted 
but the interest of 50,000 due to extended payment of the proceeds will be considered as a component of your total gross income. Okay, however, let us say on scenario three, Alberto outlived the policy and collected the maturity value of 500,000. So luckily, Alberto has outlived, meaning Alberto is still alive even after the 10 years of 10 years contract sa insurance. So in this case, Alberto will be receiving 500,000. So 500,000, so diba? When Alberto dies, his heirs will receive 1 million. However, when Alberto will still be alive, he will also, he will only be receiving 500,000. Okay, you guys, you choose which one, which um, option would you like to receive the 500,000 or the 1 million? Okay, kidding aside. Okay, we have here total proceeds of 500,000 and then um, the 500,000 will not be totally exempted will not be totally taxable, but partly partly exempted, partly taxable. Okay, the total return of premium, which is the total amount of payment made by Alberto for the entire 10 years, will be tax exempted because it will be considered as a return of premium. Therefore, does not constitute any income. But the difference of the total proceeds and your return of premiums na 300,000 this one will be considered as a return on capital and therefore will be considered as item of gross income. Okay? So that 300,000 will be considered as a part of your total gross income and therefore subject to tax kay Alberto. Another scenario four. What if after six years of payment, Alberto assigned the policy to Glino who paid him 130,000? Then Glino continued the premium payments for two more years. After which Alberto died, Glino collected the 1 million insurance proceeds. So, um, unfortunately, on the point of view of Alberto's ears, when Alberto died after eight years, the ones who will be receiving the proceeds will no longer be the ears of Alberto, but rather it's already Glino because Alberto has assigned his insurance to Glino for 130000 So what will be the tax effect on that, guys? So the assignment or sale of the policy by Alberto to Glino for 130000 resulted into a... 10,000 taxable return on capital, okay? Why, ano guys, why taxable siya ng 10,000? Because 6 years times 20,000, that will be considered as return on, ano, return on capital. So 6 years times 20,000, so that will be 120. So the total amount paid by by um, Alberto is 120,000, but ang proceeds sa pag-assign ni Alberto to Glino is 130. So therefore, there is an income of 10,000. Okay? So that 10,000 from 130 minus 120,000, so that will be taxable on the point of view of um, Alberto after that assignment. However, the receipt of the insurance proceeds by Glino resulted into a 170,000 return of capital. Okay, 170,000 return of capital. So when when si Alberto has died, guys, that's two years after pa. So therefore, si Glino nag-continue pa og bayad for 20,000 good for two years. Okay, so that means from the total 1 million, okay, so obviously, hindi man si Glino ang ear ni... Alberto, so the 1 million received by Glino will be partly taxable, partly exempted. Okay? Okay. What will be exempted is the total 170,000 na considered as return of capital. So again, as a geek can see, 170,000. So 170,000 is from the 130,000 he paid to Alberto 
plus the 40,000 na additional payment for two years kay after two years pa man namatay si Alberto so therefore ang total um return of capital ni Glino will be 170,000 so that 170,000 will be deducted to the total proceeds of 1 million so therefore 1 million minus 170,000 it will be 830,000 total taxable return on capital on the point of view of Glino Okay, although guys, this is considered as a proceeds of life insurance ni Alberto, but again, si Glino man ang nag-collect and Glino is not the ear and it is, it is considered as an investment of Glino. No? So again, Glino unfortunately earns a return on capital from the death of Alberto. So ang capital lang ni, ni Glino was just 170000 but he on the death of Alberto receives 1 million. So the difference will be subject to tax ni Glino. Okay? So that will be considered when there is a life insurance and a return of premium. Another exclusion of your gross income is your gift, bequest, and devices. So these are guys these gifts, bequests, and devices are subject to transfer, stock, transfer taxes like gift, bequests, and devices. So, transfer tax meaning it includes estate tax or donor's tax. But, income from property derived from its investment, sale, or otherwise shall be included in the gross income. Okay? Income from transferred properties will be included in the total gross income. While gift, bequest, device, or descent of income from any property in cases of transfer of divided interest shall be included in the gross income also. But neither alimony nor an allowance based on a separation agreement is taxable income. Okay, When there is a separation of, of marriage, any alimony or allowance will be exempted. Okay, will not also be subject to tax. Okay, example. Mark received a restaurant business from her girlfriend as a gift on April 1, 2019. Yes, you heard that right. Mark received a restaurant business from her girlfriend. Okay, what do we call this one, guys? What do we call this act between a girlfriend and a boyfriend? It's an act of sana all. Again, it's an act of sana all. On that date, <laughs> the restaurant has a total properties amounting to 400,000, including 50,000 cash income earned since January 1, 2019. The restaurant posted additional 150,000 cash income from April 1 to December 31, 2019. So what will be the tax effect from this gift? Of restaurant business from a girlfriend to her boyfriend okay so the transfer of business properties worth 400,000 to mark is subject or is a gratuity when you talk about gratuity guys it is transferred without consideration so it could be through an estate or through a gift subject to transfer stock transfer tax and therefore not an income tax however the 50,000 donated income shall be included in the gross income but okay but in the income tax of the donor okay so sino ang donor diri as a girlfriend okay for example the ba in this case all the properties of the restaurant including the 50,000 cash was included man na nahatag sa boyfriend so therefore this 50,000 guys is taxable on the point of view of the girlfriend even if this 50,000 is also being transferred to her boyfriend okay so since ang owner pa man aning property from Jan 1 up to April 1 is si girlfriend so therefore si girlfriend pa ang subject to tax anang 50,000 okay the 150,000 however Income of the donated property after the perfection of the donation will now be included as an item of gross income in the tax return 
of Mark, which is the Doni, or who is the Doni. It is only after the it is only after the perfection of the contract, no? Nga pag na ma earn ang restaurant, that's the time where it will be taxable on the returns of the boyfriend or ni Mark or kinsa man ang ang doni sa property. Okay? Okay, let's continue. We have here another exclusion to your gross income, compensation for injuries and sickness. Okay? Excluded are the following compensation for injuries or sickness. Number one, amounts received through accident or health insurance under Workmen's Compensation Act. Okay, for example, you are working and then accidentally you were um, physically injured or you were sick because of that duty of yours sa trabaho. So if that activity, that circumstance will occur, guys, you will be compensated under Workmen's Compensation Act. And that proceeds from Workmen's Compensation Act na or any health insurance, guys, will be exempted as long as it's compensation for injury or sickness. Or amounts of any damages received, whether by suit or cases or agreement on account of such injuries or sickness will also be exempted from um, taxation. But recoveries of certain damages, for example, recoveries of damages representing compensation for personal injuries arising from libel, defamation, slander, breach of promise to marry, alienation of affection, or are not subject also to income tax and shall not be included to gross income. Okay? So here, guys, a oh, breach of promise to marry. Okay? Breach of promise to marry. Let's just... Um, continue our illustration earlier. For example, si Mark no, received a gift of restaurant business from his girlfriend because Mark has promised to marry his girlfriend. But again, Mark has breached that promise. Okay? Mark breached that promise. So therefore, okay, therefore, ano, um, nagbayad si Mark for damages or any compensation para sa ano breach of promise niya to his boyfriend uh, to his girlfriend so again any um recoveries of damages for that breach of promise to marry for example or alienation of affection will not be included sa gross income so okay lang gihapon kay ano okay na lang on the lighter side balag wala gipakaslan si boyfriend sa iyang girlfriend at least de ba ang iyang um, damages recovered from that unfortunate act ni Mark will be not subject to tax okay so i think we have an illustration for this andrew was hit by a jeepney he spent three months in the house in the hospital and paid hundred thousand for hospitalization expenses. He sued the jeepney driver and was awarded by the court a total indemnity of three hundred forty thousand, divided as follows: two hundred indemnity for his pain, anguish, and sufferings, and forty thousand reimbursement for lost salaries, and one hundred thousand as reimbursement for his hospital bills. So what will be the tax effect of the total proceeds received by Andrew from the jeepney driver? Okay, so the 200,000 indemnity and the 100,000 reimbursement for the hospitalization expenses are non-taxable returns of capital. Okay, note that theft is a capital item with infinite value. So therefore, that will not be subject to tax. So yun nga yung sinabi ko earlier that any proceeds from damages or any insurance made from um dam uh, I mean injury or sickness guys will be exempted. However, kanang forty thousand na reimbursement for lost salary that is a recovery of lost profit. Okay, as mentioned in our previous discussion dito kay gross income, it will be an item of your gross income. Kasi nga, the concept of that is that regardless kung na na accident si Andrew, Andrew will still work and therefore will still earn that 40,000. So regardless if this unfortunate accident happened or not, that 40,000 will still be taxable. Okay? So that is 
um, compensation for damages. But compensation for expected profit or lost profit will be subject to tax. Another income exempt from treaty, exempt, guys, exempt by treaty ito, exempt under treaty, income of any kind to the extent required by any treaty, obligation binding upon the government of the Philippines is ex exempt from taxation. So as we all know, treaty, it is an agreement between two nations agreeing on a certain um, certain treaty or certain agreement. Okay, example of income exempt under treaty is your salaries of officials of the United Nations assigned in the Philippines if paid by the United Nations and certified by the Secretary General of the UN or salaries, allowances, fees, or wages received by the citizens of the United States of America working in consular offices in the Philippines are exempt from all taxes and or the salaries of diplomatic officials and agents, guys, are also example of an income which is exempted by a treaty. We also have here your retirement benefits. So retirement benefits received under RA number 7641 and those received by officials and employees of a private firms, whether individual or corporate, in accordance with a reasonable private pension plan or RPP, RPP, RPPP, reasonable private pension plan maintained by the employer. The retiring official or employee has been in the service of the same employer for at least 10 years and is not less than 50 years of age at the time of um at the time of retirement so again before that benefit will be exempted then that but there should be um requisites to be followed so um requisites again nga is that 10 years the employer should have worked at least at least 10 years and is not less than okay 50 years of age at the time of his retirement so dapat 50 above the benefits granted shall be availed by an official or employee only one. So, dapat one lang siya. And any amount received by an official or employee by his ears from the employer as a consequence of separation of such official or employee from the service of the employer because of death, sickness, or physical disability, or for any cause beyond the control of the said employee or employee official will also not be included in the gross income of the taxpayer. So again, when the reason of separation is beyond the control of the employee or the official, any separation benefits or retirement benefit given to him or his um, heirs or beneficiaries will be exempted. Another, the provisions of any existing law to the contrary, notwithstanding social security benefits, retirement gratuities, pensions, and other similar benefits received from foreign government agencies and other institutions, private or public by resident or non-resident citizen of the Philippines or aliens who come to reside permanently in the Philippines are not also included in the gross income. Talking of United States veterans, Payments of benefits due or to become due under United States Veterans Administration are also not included in the gross income. And lastly, guys, benefits received from or enjoyed under security secu uh, social security system and GSIS are not included also in the gross income of the insured or the employee. Okay, now let's proceed to the last component, which is your miscellaneous items, which is also not included sa gross income, if ever there's any. Number one, income derived by governments. Okay, income derived by foreign governments, financing institutions owned, controlled, or enjoying refinancing from foreign governments and international or regional financial institutions established by foreign governments from investment in loans, stocks, bonds, or other domestic securities, or from interest on deposits in the banks 
or in banks in the Philippines. Also excluded is the income accruing to the government of the Philippines derived from any public utility or from the exercise of any essential government functions. Okay, as long as it is in line for the exercise of government function, then it will be exempted. Pero when um, a government extension or government public utility is earning an income which is apart from the exercise of the essential government function mandated for that specific agency, any other income guys nga layo ra sa ilahang mandate or their mandato, that income will be subject to tax. And number two, prizes and awards. So prizes and awards generally are taxable. Pero when prizes and awards made primarily in recognition of achievements in the following fields like religious, charitable, scientific, educational, artistic, literary, or civic, these are exempted. With following conditions. Number one, the recipient was selected without any action on his part to enter the contest or proceedings. So, dapat wala siya any effort. Si participant has not joined any tryouts or any screening for him or her to be chosen as a representative. Or letter B, the recipient is not required to render substantial feature services as a condition to receiving the prize or award. Okay? Dapat dili siya mag-render o um, ano, return service. Walay return service si taxpayer. And letter B, all prizes and awards granted to athletes, to local and international sports competitions in tournaments. Okay? As we already made mention of this before, whether held in the Philippines or abroad and sanctioned by their national sports association. Okay, for example, when there is a cash prize received by any athletes participating in SEA Games or Asian Games or any other independent na, na mga, independent na mga tournament, as long as they are well sanctioned by their specific national sports association, therefore, any income from prizes and winnings that they got from that sport tournament will be exempted. Again, guys, as long as they are sanctioned by the National Sports Association. Okay? Another miscellaneous item is um, 13th month and other benefits. Okay? Gross benefits received by officials in employees of public and private entities provided that the total exemption shall not exceed 90,000 per year. Okay? So, si 13th month pay including other benefits is exempted as long as it will not exceed 90,000. Okay? So, talking about other benefits, what are other benefits, guys? So, si other benefits, we will be discussing that later on when we reach our discussion for the many miss benefit because um, the many miss uh, exists na mga income na exists the many miss benefit guys will be forming part of your other benefits. So again, for the meantime, it's important you to note as long as ang 13th month and other benefits ni employee does not exceed 90,000 then therefore it will be exempted and will be excluded sa iyang gross income. Another is your GSIS, SSS, Medicare, uh, GSS, GS, G, GSIS, SSS, PhilHealth, Guys, this is PhilHealth. Medicare is PhilHealth. And pag -ibig contributions and your union dues. Okay, sorry guys. This Medicare should be PhilHealth. Huh? GSIS, SSS, PhilHealth, and other pag -ibig contributions. And your union dues of individuals shall not also be forming part of your total gross income. So that is why when we compete for the taxable compensation income of a taxpayer, we extract, no? We deduct this. Um, we deduct these contributions because these are non-taxable. And number five, your gains realized. 
no? Gains realized from a sale or exchange of retirement of bonds, debentures, or other certificate of indentedness with a maturity of more than five years will not be included in the gross income. So we were already um, discussed this dito sa atong individual taxation, guys, na if there is um, interest income from um, investments, with more than 5 years na maturity such will be exempted pero kung ilahan nang iano guys ilahan nang i terminate less than 5 years so dira na musulod tong ano passive income na 1 3 and 5% ata yon if i'm not mistaken Okay, and lastly, letter B, gains realized by the investor upon redemption of shares of stock in a mutual fund company. Note that a mutual fund company is an open-end and closed-end investment. Okay, so those are the items excluded from your total gross income. So again, just a sort of Recap, we have number one, proceeds of a life insurance policy, amount received by the insured as a return of premium, gift, bequest, device, or decent, compensation for injuries or sickness, income exempt under treaties, retirement benefits, pensions, and gratuities, income, your miscellaneous items that includes income in the Philippines of a foreign government or foreign government-owned and controlled corporations, income of government and its political subdivisions, prizes and awards and recognition of religious, charitable, scientific, educational, artistic, literary, or civic achievements, prizes and awards in athletic sports competitions, your contributions to GSIS, SSS, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig and union dues, 13th month pay and other benefits not exceeding 90,000. And lastly, gains from sale of bonds, debentures, or certificates of indentedness with maturity more than 5 years, including gains from redemptions of shares in mutual fund. Okay, so these are the items which are excluded. Although these are income ni taxpayer, but these are excluded sa, ano, sa iyahang total gross income and therefore will not be included sa iyahang taxable income. Okay? So, if you have any more clarifications on this matter, so you just prepare it to be resolved during our video, like a uh, virtual class, or you may actually um, comment down below sa inyong mga clarifications for um, an immediate for an immediate resolution. Okay? So that's it for this video lecture. See you and good luck on your second exam. God bless.